Three years ago, when I was 19, I had just gotten hired at my local mall. Even though I've always hated the mall and have lots of weird experiences there, I was desperate after quitting my previous job, and I figured with co-workers around, I'd be safe. It was about 6 p.m. on a winter night, and I was asked to come into the store to fill out paperwork before I started working. I was seated on a bench near the back of the store, next to a boy who had also just been hired. We made some small talk about the job and how the piles of paperwork were easily the largest and most ridiculous we'd ever seen. I thought he seemed cool. We quickly got to work and started filling out the forms mostly in silence. At first I was so absorbed in the papers that I didn't realize I was being watched. I looked up to see a tall man, about 6 foot 5, maybe 45 years old, standing about 5 feet away, eyes locked on me. I stared right back at the man and after a few seconds asked if I could help him. He asked some very vague question about the store. I gestured to the huge pile of papers in my lap and told him that I hadn't started working yet and couldn't help him. He just continued staring. I'm a small girl at 5'1". I've been creeped on plenty of times and learned a long time ago not to be too polite about it, though I had just gotten hired, and I didn't want to be rude about it either. What? I asked impatiently. I... Uh, do you have a boyfriend? He stuttered. Yes, I lied, looking back down and continuing writing. How old are you? He persisted. I just said that I was sorry and that I was busy, not looking up. He stood there, and he asked when I had started working and if I lived close by. He asked if my boyfriend was good to me. I ignored him. Finally, he walked away. The boy sitting next to me ignored this whole encounter. I decided that he wasn't as cool as I'd first thought. A few minutes later, I noticed the man wandering aimlessly around the store, occasionally looking back at me. I wondered if my new co-workers would think I was dramatic if I asked to be walked to my car. The next time I looked around, he was gone. Relieved, I finished what felt like the millionth written form and pieced the fuck out of the store. I scanned around as I made my way towards the mall exit and I saw no sign of the man anywhere. I couldn't see anything outside the glass doors, but I could see that it was dark. I walked outside, and as soon as the door closes on me, I am literally lifted off of my feet. The man from the store is picking me up, kind of rocking back and forth in what was the most terrifying hug sort of thing I had ever experienced in my life. He put me down to tell me that I'm everything he was looking for in a girl and how nicely he'll treat me. He said that he could tell as soon as he saw me that I was the one. Of course, I didn't see one other person in the parking lot. At first, I was stunned. Then he reached for my hand when fight or flight finally kicked in. Before I knew it, I was, stupidly, booking it to my car. He's already in hand, not looking back. I looked up for a split second as I was unlocking my door and sliding into my car, and I saw... nothing. I didn't see him anywhere. Like, what the fuck? My first thought was, he's in my car. And I looked in the back seat even though I saw when I entered my car that it was empty. I didn't know if he was hiding behind a car, hiding behind my car, getting in his car, or if he followed me at all. But I was 100% mentally prepared to run him over should he come running from somewhere. I didn't know if he took a lucky guess as to which one of the mall's exits I'd come out of, or if he saw which way I'd entered. I got out of that parking lot real quick. I was frantically looking through my rear view mirror as I sped home, half expecting to see the dude pop up from my back seat. I didn't see anyone following me and started to calm down, when suddenly I see this huge black truck ripping down the road behind me at top speed. It was a pretty good distance behind me, but I noped out of the situation without a second thought and pulled into a hotel parking lot that I was luckily next to at the time, turning off my headlights and parking amidst the other cars in the lot. I lowered myself and watched the truck continue down the road. I had no idea whether the car was him or just a person driving fast, but I didn't move for probably five minutes, on high alert, ready to poop my pants at the drop of a pin. Never seeing the truck return, I decided to continue the drive home, taking a detour from the road I was on. No one followed me the rest of the way. I quit my job before I even started, and I cried on the inside for a few hours, and that was that. This happened in April 2019. My name is Marie. My boyfriend name is Eddie. Anyways, 
Eddie and I were hanging out at my house for the day when we decided to go to the Chinese restaurant not too far away from my house, so we decided to walk. Now, in order to get to the Chinese restaurant from my house, there's two ways. One is a long way, and the second is a shorter way. So we chose a short way, obviously, since we were super hungry and it was closer. Eddie and I were about one third of the way to the restaurant when it had begun to rain a little bit and we noticed that we had to pass the bridge leading to the restaurant. As we went under the bridge, we noticed a suspicious looking man. His face was very dirty, he was just a dirty guy. He was covered in dirt and grease. He was wearing dirty black shoes and appeared that they were covered in mud. As we were looking at him and our surroundings, Eddie noticed that the man was hiding a kitchen knife with a blade. It was about four to five inches and it had a black handle on it and the handle was in his sleeve. Eddie gets freaked out at this point and he whispers to me, get behind me. I say, why? What's going on? What did you see? He said, get behind me now. He moves me behind him as I move myself behind him. I'm afraid at this point because I don't know what's going on. This man walks past us and he begins to check my body out from head to toe and Eddie keeps looking at him and the man looks at Eddie. As Eddie turns forward to make sure that we don't get hit by a coming car, I turned around and saw the man reach at me. He was attempting to grab me, which causes me to move forward. Eddie turns around and the man speed walks away. Eddie and I stop and wait for a good three minutes just to make sure we aren't followed and the man wasn't nowhere in sight. We hurried up and practically jogged to the restaurant. We arrive and we eat. When it was time to pay the bill, I noticed that I was a little short on money. Eddie and I discussed what we were going to do and I texted my mom and Eddie said he was going to go to my house to get the money and come back. The waiter said it was fine. I stayed at the restaurant while Eddie went back to the house to collect the money for my mother. Eddie arrived back and I could tell something was wrong and I asked him what happened. He said we should stay here for about five minutes. I asked why. He said when he was walking back to my house, he passed the bridge again and saw the same man. He was faced towards the freeway on his phone while smoking a cigarette. He said. When I got to your house, I hurried up and left since I knew the man seen us going towards the restaurant. I rode my bike back there. As I rode back, I saw him and we made eye contact. He looked furious that you were not on my page riding with me. He started cussing to himself and he went on his phone angry. When he's done telling me this, I get freaked out. And I ask him, how are we going to get back home? Are we going to take the long way? So we decided to take the long way after a good 10 or 20 minute wait. Thank God we did not see the man. We reported it to the police. We have not seen that man ever since that day. I am glad I was a bit short on money that day because if I wasn't, I could have gotten kidnapped and possibly something worse. I used to sit on the computer at my parents' house on AIM with my friends. The main landline for the house sat next to me in that room. One night, I get a call from a weird number, and the voice on the other end asked for me by name. I told him, yes, this is me. He proceeded to tell me that he was at a bar in a town that I was not from, and saw, for a good time, call. He decided to just give it a shot and see what kind of person picked up. I told the guy, I'm 16, I can't even get into bars, nor do I know anyone from that area. He started with, you sound cute, I bet you're a nice girl, huh? He told me he was 18, and he wasn't even supposed to be there, but he had some friends who covered for him. I gave the conversation a chance because I thought one of my friends was messing with me. I was hoping to eventually find out who wrote my name on a wall in the bathroom. He asked me questions. I asked him questions, and before I knew it, we had been talking for hours. He was actually very charming and super interesting. I can't remember what all was said because that was about 14 years ago, but I remember telling him that I worked at a movie theater. No, I didn't have a boyfriend, and yes, I'd love to meet him sometime. 
He called me a few times after that night and just chatted with me. And the conversation was always flirtatious and sometimes even sexual. And fast forward to a week later. I'm at work when I see a man pull up out front of the movie theater and come inside. He was definitely older than 18 and looked right at me when he came through the door. My blood ran cold and I immediately got this sick feeling that this was the man I'd been talking to. I was stuck at the ticket counter. He walked over to me and called me out by name. All I could say is, hold on a sec. I ran to the other side of the theater where I told a group of co-workers that a guy was here to see me. He was probably a creep and I asked what I could do. He must have overheard me talking because he bolted out of the back door and took off right away. For the rest of the day, I felt weird and worried. I wasn't sure what I should do. I told my mom bits and pieces of what was going on because I knew the situation was quite sketchy and I didn't help anything. The part that I left out was the fact that I had been talking to him for a few nights that week and exactly what we were talking about. He called the house that night and my mother answered the phone. He asked for me right away. She asked him, who's this? He said, none of your business. I just need you to let me talk to her. My mom flipped out. My daughter is 16 years old. Do you know that? I'm her mother. It's absolutely my business. How old are you? I'm 18 years old, and whatever's going on between me and your daughter is between us. She hounded him for another 20 minutes and told him she was calling the police. I decided to do some research on his phone number. Found out he's actually 28, married with three kids, and had been in the army. We also found several mug shots with arrests from the town we lived in, and my mother got sick of the whole thing. Took me down to the police station to file a report. I sat down and told the officer that the man found me at work, and he was not who he said he was, that I was scared as well. The officer asked if I had had any contact with him other than the initial phone call. I admitted that I had been speaking with him for the last few nights, and told him where I had worked. The officer and my mother both began yelling at me for being stupid, and having poor judgment. The officer said if anything else happened to report it, but otherwise they weren't going to pursue anything. He called me back one more time after that, and I was the one who picked up. I told him not to call me again and that the conversation was over. He told me before I hung up that he just wanted to meet a nice girl, but that I had started all this drama. Still to this day, I have no idea how he got my name and number, or why he wanted a 16-year-old, other than the fact that he was a creep bastard preying on young girls. One night when I was 15 years old, I arrived home just after midnight and my parents were already in bed. I decided to leave the back door unlocked for my older brother since he was sleeping over a friend's house. Big mistake. In the middle of the night, I awoke to feel something cold and metallic pressing on my neck. At first I thought it was my brother playing a prank on me, but then I couldn't see the pitch black bedroom. Then a big hairy hand covered my nose and mouth. I couldn't breathe. I heard a deep rasping voice say, if you make any noise, I'll kill you. After my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I could make out the shape of a man leaning over me. There was no face, just a black mask with holes cut out for the eyes. He was holding a knife to my throat. I knew my parents were asleep in the next room, so I tried to make as much noise as I could, but the man's hand muffled my screams. I kicked my legs trying to bang on the walls so my parents could hear. All of a sudden, through the screams, I can hear my parents get up and they're running towards my room. When my parents opened the bedroom door, they were confronted by a terrifying scene. All they could see in the darkened room was a big black silhouette bent over me and holding a knife to my throat. As soon as he saw the knife, my father jumped on top of the intruder and struggled with him. My mother grabbed the man's wrist and wrestled the knife out of his hand. My father managed to get his arm around the masked man's neck and began to choke him. I grabbed my cell phone and I ran outside to call 911 as my parents kept the intruder pinned to the bedroom floor until the police arrived. The bedroom door burst open and the police officer ran in holding a gun yelling don't move or I'll blow your head off. 
the police handcuffed the intruder and dragged him out of the house. When police searched the man's truck, they found a variety of weapons and some bloody clothes. It turned out that the masked man had already murdered two people a few days before. My family and I, we had no way of knowing it, but we just captured a serial killer. And the scariest part about this is that it can happen to anyone at any time. This was real. What I've learned from this is to always, always lock my back door.